Good evening. This is Dominic here from JDM Tax Consulting. Today I'm bringing a, a presentation to you about IRS liens and levies. Um, please, this is not tax advice or legal advice in whatever form. If you need help with any tax issue with the IRS, please give us a call at 904-204-7724 or visit us at www.jdntaxconsulting.com. Today we're going to speak about um, IRS collections, liens, and levies, the implications as well as remedies. Okay, but before we do, I do need to go over uh, uh, some of the services we provide. Um, we provide individual tax preparation, business tax preparation, nonprofit organizations. If you are, if you own a small non or mid-sized nonprofit organizations, we can help you with the filing of uh, Form 990 Easy 990 N. Um, uh, e-postcard, and so forth. If you need to amend your tax return, we can also help you. Uh, we do state income tax, um, as well as um, sales and use uh, tax preparation, tax review and consultation, and unfiled tax return. Tax help we provide, we provide uh, penalty and interest abatement, lien we help with lien withdrawals or uh, release if you if you receive a lien notice and you need help with um, how to address it, we can help you with that. Please give us a call. Uh, we can help stop and reverse levies. Um, we can do audit representation if you receive an examination report from the IRS and you need audit representation, we can help you. Um, if you need a fresh, fresh, uh, fresh start with the IRS, we can help help you. Debt set with debt settlement, tax debt settlement, payment plan, often compromise OCI, and many more. If you need help with uh, any other tax issue, please give us a call at nine zero four two zero four seven seven two four. You can visit us also for more information at www.jdntaxconsulting.com or just send us an email at taxhelp at jdntaxconsulting.com. Lean and Levy, the primary, uh, uh, let's do the introductions of that. I understand that so many uh, of you um, taxpayers have received liens, notices, uh, and levies, and sometimes you don't know what to do, and sometimes you start panicking because your property is at risk. Uh, so the primary purpose of IRS liens and levies are basically to collect tax debt. What is the purpose? The purpose of the IRS is to collect um, the government a tax for the government. So the, the primary purpose of liens so is to collect tax debt that the taxpayer owed to the federal government. They have been able to collect, basically the IRS have been able to collect most tax liabilities because taxpayers um, decided to pay voluntary. A lot of taxpayers pay voluntarily into the tax system and, uh, but in the same token, some taxpayers, they don't pay their taxes. So in that case, they, um, they fall into the collection category. So this has been always, this has not always been the case where the uh, our taxpayers voluntarily pay their tax share into the tax system. Um, as a result of that, the IRS often find itself in a dire position of compelling and sometimes forcing taxpayers to satisfy their tax compliance obligations. And how they do that through the collection process, 
and when the collection process fails, then they took they take a more um, a more serious step to force lien or implement liens and uh, levies on taxpayers in order to to compel them to pay their taxes. Liens and levies, so basically the most common, are the most common mechanism the IRS have been utilized to compel taxpayers to pay their share, uh, fair share into the tax system. Um, they are the tools at the disposal of the IRS when all options to collect tax have failed. So basically the IRS will send you a notice. You receive a notice in the mail or maybe for tax due a tax liability. And if you don't, um, if you don't take the necessary step, take charge of that notice and re reply to the IRS to that notice. At one point in time, when you left, left everything unchecked, you will definitely receive a, a lien, a notice that a lien, a claim that the IRS will put onto on any properties you have. Now, while liens and levies are ultimately the best tool at the disposal of the IRS to collect tax debt, for taxpayers who have uh, to deal with the IRS, lien and levies are very stressful situation. And at certain point in time, they could be very disruptive and financial, impose a financial strain and catastrophic uh, to a taxpayer's financial life. Um, for some taxpayers, there are no words to express the impact of liens and levies caused in their lives. It doesn't have to always be like that because if you reply to no the notices when you receive them, you will not fall into the category of the group of uh, taxpayers who receive who would be more likely to receive a lien from the uh, notice from the IRS or even a lien simply um, imputed on your property. In spite of all the realities of seriousness and the implication of liens and levies, they are good news for, for taxpayers. So now, liens are very, the one thing you have to understand that liens are very expensive to enforce. Um, for the IRS have to go to the court, they have to get a court order, a judge have to sign, um, before they can implement uh, a lien. So because of that implication posed by issuing them or issuing those liens, the IRS would prefer to collect the tax or find a satisfying solution. Any beneficial opportunity to resolve, uh, to resolve the issue other than imposing a lien or levy would be mostly considered. Any other solution apart from imposing a lien if a taxpayer is so willing to resolve the issue with the IRS. The training today, um, of our presentation today, the objective is to help us learn the principles concerning liens and levies. In addition, we'll learn about how to resolve IRS collections, liens and levies activities. Now, what is a lien? The issuance of a lien is mostly a transitional moment for the IRS, a drastic measure have been adopted in the collection process. They have targeted valuable assets to satisfy the tax obligations. On the other hand, for the taxpayer, it is a moment of uh, a catastrophic financial disaster, basically. Now you receive a lien, you are, now you are panic, or your, the IRS has a claim on your property, like if it's a house, if it is your home, you cannot sell it because of the lien that you have placed, that has placed on that property. For the IRS, it, is, it means collecting or collecting of, uh, collection of money for the government. While for you and I, as taxpayers, it is a risk to our most valuable asset. It could be our home, it could be our automobile, it could be a, an, an IRA account, an investment account, where the IRS could could put garnish could garnish that account, and any other asset of value. 
would be at risk um, to satisfy a tax debt. Um, the issuance of a tax lien is the IRS accession of a legal claim to a taxpayer's asset or other properties as a security to satisfy the tax uh, payers, uh, the, tax, the tax that the taxpayers or the federal government. So basically what the lien tells uh, when a lender uh, takes uh, your, uh, your credit file, they see a lien on your property, it tells other creditors, I have a claim against this property. The government uh, claim on that property supersede any other uh, any other debt on that property. When the IRS imposes a lien on the taxable property, it has to be addressed immediately or eventually they will seize that property. So left it uh, unchecked is not a good idea. It's not a smart move at all. So when you receive a lien from the IRS, you receive a lien notice or uh, collection notice, let's, let's start with the collection notice so that you don't even get into the lien process. If you properly reply to the notices whenever you receive them and then address them, take care of those notices if it is a balance due to the IRS, try to find a way to resolve the issue instead of let, uh, left it unchecked, take charge of it so that you don't have to go into the process of lien because a lien on your property, a lien on your credit file is not a positive, um, uh, uh, is not a positive, it will have a negative impact on you. And whether it, it could be a negative impact on, on getting a, a good job, a good paying job, it could be a negative impact of getting a loan by a car uh, or even by a house. Okay, it should be so, so therefore it should be addressed immediately or eventually the, you will lo lose that asset, that house will be gone or that car will be gone. Okay, it will be, it could be any property of value. So the IRS will target when uh, the IRS will put lien on any property of value, such as bank account, real estate with substantial amount of equity. Um, as long as the equity on the property will satisfy the tax debt, there's sufficient equity on that property to satisfy the tax debt, it could be at risk of a lien. If you uh, don't take care of your, your tax liability and you get it, you let it go into, uh, you let it, let it step up to the lien process and then thereby, uh, uh, and, and then thereby, you, if you leave the, left the lien unchecked and then you get levied, then you will at one point in time lose the property. The primary purpose of the issuance of a federal tax lien is to fulfill outstanding tax debt. In addition, it's M as a notification to other creditors that the IRS or the government has a legal claim to that property. Now, let's talk about how to remove IRS-issued tax lien. When the IRS issues a tax lien, or if you have left your, if you have left your tax notices, your tax liability unchecked, or you have not filed your taxes for a year in fear of, owing, of knowing how much you owe the IRS, whether you file your taxes or you don't file your taxes, you will still owe the IRS because the IRS has all, um, all record of your income. They have the wage and income transcript which shows the, your employers, whether you work, for, you work on a 1099 or W-2, the IRS has record of all your 1099 and your W-2s, whether you file your taxes or not, they'll know how much tax, they will assess your tax, they will calculate, do their own calculation based on the, uh, based on the, um, uh, wage and income trust uh, statement they receive from your employers, and then they will assess your tax. And when they assess your uh, tax liability, it would be higher than if you would have filed the tax yourself because some of the credit that you would have received 
you will not get them. So the tax assessment would be higher than if you would have filed your taxes to 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 uh, to pay them your your fair share. So, um, so, so therefore, it is important for you to file your taxes to prevent the IRS from assessing your taxes. And then when they assess you the tax, and then the tax is so high, you are unable to pay, and you are afraid of, of filing the next year and so forth, then you fall so far behind, and then now you're in the limbo, your properties are at risk, anything that you own at risk, your social security income when you retired, all at risk. Your retirement income may be at risk as well. The fact by the time that they contact, uh, contact uh, um, a tax professional about a levy, most of the time they have, they have already ignored several notices and even when the annual agent, even when the tax uh, IRS agent called them, they ignored, oh, this is the IRS. I know this number, this is the IRS. Don't ignore the IRS call. If the IRS call you or you have an annual agent working with you or you have a tax uh, uh, resolution company working with you, have them contact the IRS for you instead of not returning the IRS call at all. Because when you don't re uh, reply to the IRS phone call, you're not replying to their notice, uh, you're not replying to their request. You are putting yourself at a greater risk. At this point in time, a lien has all, uh, could be filed by the time if you don't properly address um, and reply to IRS request. So after the tax, after the tax they ignore multiple collection attempts by the IRS uh, for fear um for fear of of the tax debt because at, sometimes they may not have the amount of money required to pay to pay the uh to pay the, the IRS. The IRS is willing to work with you on a payment plan if you are willing to pay your your tax debt. Uh if you don't know how you can call me, you can call uh, other uh, annual agent, you can call other tax resolution company. We are willing to work with you and also to work with the IRS to help you find solutions to your tax debt. So all you have to do is to give us a call and uh, uh, provide us the notice that you receive and we'll let you know how we can address it and how we can go from there. Okay. So now taxpayers uh um okay okay lean release now how do you um how do you remove lean from your property now if you if a property has been uh if a lien has been filed against your property whether it is your house or whatever asset the lien has has been filed against how do you remove it? Now, so to remove any encumbrance and potential seizure of taxable property by, by, by the IRS, the lien must be released, okay? To remove the encumbrance and the, against the lien, it has, the lien must be released because the lien represents an encumbrance, an encumbrance that would prevent you from doing anything with the property. Okay, if you sell it, First, before you get any equity from that property, the lien, whatever caused the lien to be filed, the tax debt has to be satisfied. So if you can work out something to prevent a lien file for, uh, on, on your property, it is to your advantage. A lien would be released from any pending claim when the IRS leaves the issue claim against the asset, okay? A lien would instantly stop and remove all immediate seizure interest from the taxpayer's property. But now, in order for that lien to instantly stop and remove, um, the condition or whatever the conditions you have with the IRS to remove that lien must, uh, uh, you must take, you must, um, 
you must address it in good faith, in other words. Okay, if you have a payment plan, you must be faithful to that payment plan. If you have uh, uh, um, an offer and compromise, you must be faithful to that offer. If you tell the IRS, I'm going to pay, okay, $10,000 to satisfy or $15,000 uh, debt, and then they agree to it, and then you never send that, you never send that uh, $10,000, then you still owe them and that $15,000, and then you forfeited any future uh, agreement. Because if you are not faithful to the first agreement, why you why you think that they they they're going to honor another agreement? And then your 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 chances of getting uh, a lien filed against your property become greater. So immediately means here 30 days after the tax debt is satisfied or become legally unenforceable. So 30 days after tax debt is satisfied. Um, a lien could be re released, and if, or if the tax debt become unenforceable. Now, remember that the IRS has 10 years to collect a tax debt. After 10 years, the tax debt has to be released if the IRS fails to collect that tax, tax debt. And then, unless there's certain other conditions that cause them to prolong that um, statute of limitation. So basically, once the lien is released, the taxpayer can do whatever, sell or transfer the property, or the asset is so desired. If um, lien release continues, if a taxpayer is able to pay, if you are able to pay off a tax debt, it would be advisable at this point to pay the debt and release the federal tax lien, if you are able to pay the tax debt, okay? So it would be, at this point, just pay the tax debt and get the lien release from your property, and then clear your credit. In addition, a lien could be released if a tax debt was discharged in bankruptcy. Now, it's not easy to discharge a government debt, a federal debt in bankruptcy, but if it was discharged in bankruptcy, if the bankruptcy uh, allows a tax debt to uh, be discharged, then in that case, the lien, if the, the, if the lien was imputed because of that tax debt and the tax debt was discharged in bankruptcy, if the bankruptcy so allow it, then the tax lien could be released. It could also be released if a statute of limitation has legally it's hard to collect the tax debt. Remember that the IRS has 10 years to collect a tax debt. Unless the debt was, was um, a fraud, it was, uh, it was the result of fraud, okay? If the debt was a result of fraud and it was discovered that it was, uh, and there's evidence that it was uh, the result of fraud, that statute of, the, of limitations may not be applied. Okay, but they have 10 years to collect the tax debt, and then if the tax debt is not collected within that 10 years, unless certain situation cause them to prolong that statute of limitation per se, like a fraud, it was the result of fraud. Okay, if the IRS, the IRS may also release a lien if it is clear, if, if it will clear the path for taxpayer to borrow money to satisfy the tax obligation. As I explained before, a tax lien will put, uh, will, uh, will put a negative impact on your credit and will make it difficult for you to find financing for whatever, uh, you know, it, even, a tax lien could even prevent you from getting uh, employment, from getting a job, a good job, a good paying job. So if the a tax lien would clear the path, if the release could clear the path for you to find financing, necessary financing to pay the tax debt, if you can prove to the IRS that, or you can show evidence that you are trying to get uh, financing to pay the lien, and, but because the lien is on your credit, you are unable to, to, to find financing, 
and releasing that lien will help you find financing to pay the tax debt, they may release that lien um, conditionally. Conditionally. So the condition on that lien release would be that you find that financing. If you don't find that financing, then the lien will be uh, um, imputed again. Okay? Um, so I want to make it clear that payment plan or, or a past payment plan and often compromise, whether you have an agreement with the IRS or not for compromise, installment agreement will not release, instantly release a, a, a tax lien. So uh, in order for tax lien to be released because of a payment plan or often compromise or installment plan, that plan must be satisfied. It must be satisfied before the tax lien is released. When the IRS accept an installment agreement or often compromise, they will only release the lien after the term of the agreement has been met. Lien withdrawals. Now we have lien withdrawals and lien release is totally different thing. Okay, lien release um, will still have an impact on your credit after the lien is released because the lien was in fact imputed. It was in fact put on your credit. But what about lien withdrawal? So it is important to know that lien release does not in itself resolve all the negative impact that come with file a lien, because the file a lien has a lot of negative impact, like as I explained before, okay? It will make it difficult for you to find financing, even make it difficult for you. Some renters from some landlord not, will not even rent you uh, uh, a property if you have a lien on your credit. So that's how, uh, catastrophic it is when a lien is filed against uh, against you. For example, when a lien is released, it does not change or adjust the negative impact it had on you, on your credit, and the ability for you to obtain credit. Okay. However, lien withdrawals would erase the negative impact of the lien as if it had not been filed. In other words, when you talk about a lien release, basically uh, the lien release was, in fact, it was filed in good faith. It was filed, there's evidence to support um, it. All the, processes were, and all the processes were in place to file the lien. So it was filed based on evidence. There are factual evidence to back the IRS on file the lien. But when a lien is withdrawn, so there may have been certain uh, processes, procedures that was not followed. Because of that, the lien must be withdrawn. So, so whatever impact the lien had on your credit, because the processes were not uh, in place for them to file the lease, the lien, or the pro procedure was not followed, the legal and prepared, the legal um, uh, steps were not properly taken place. So the lien has to be withdrawn as if it was, as if it had not been filed. So whatever impact, negative impact that lien had on your credit, they have to be reversed. Okay, so basically in that case, a lien withdrawal will restore the taxpayer credit to the day before the lien was placed on your file. Some of examples that will um, warrant the uh, 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 lien withdrawals, one of them is that the IRS, if the IRS made a mistake in issuing the lien, this is warrant for withdrawal. The lien must be withdrawn if the IRS made a mistake in issuing the lien. One of the main reasons the IRS may withdraw a tax lien if it was prematurely filed or if it was not filed in accordance to its procedure related to Form 12277. So in other words, 
uh, you did not receive proper notice of the tax debt. You did not receive a notice of tax assessment or tax liability. You did not know you or the IRS. The IRS never sent you a notice. Okay, you did not receive proper um, uh, notice of the lien, and suddenly you find out a lien was filed against you. You did not file, receive proper notice of the lien. So these warrant to withdraw the lien because the IRS is required to notify taxpayer if they have been assessed certain tax liability. They are required to notify you if you have if you or them, they cannot just go file a tax lien against you without you knowing that you owe them money. So they have to assess the tax. They have to try to collect the tax. When collection process fails, then if you, as the taxpayer, they did their due diligence, they sent you the notice. They sent you the uh, they sent you the notice uh, of tax assessment, tax collections. They uh, call you and you refuse to reply. They made requests for information for examination. You never provide the information now. A lien is filed. Then the lien was filed accordingly. But if the processes was not followed, the procedure was not followed, then the lien must be withdrawn. Form 122 is the Department of Revenue, Internal Revenue, the IRS application for withdrawal of file form uh, uh, 68Y. Notice of federal tax lien under the Internal Revenue Code section 6323J. It is logically and legally makes sense that the IRS is willing to withdraw a tax and if the tax there is so if the if the tax that resulted in the filing of the lien was erroneously assessed and all the taxpayer was not properly notified, sufficiently made aware of the tax debt. I mean, if I don't know, I owe you. Of course, you know, as a taxpayer, if you work, you're supposed to pay your taxes. And then if you don't file, you know definitely you owe taxes. Because some taxpayers, the main reason why they don't file the taxes is because they know that they owe the IRS and they decided not to file. But even that, before a lien must be filed, you must be notified of tax assessment and collection notices must be sent to you and a request must be made and so forth. And then once a lien is uh, about to be filed, um, you must be notified that a lien is going to be filed. And if you don't be diligent, you don't, address the issue, you don't take the proper step to take charge of the issue, then a lien will be filed. And then once a lien is filed, then if you don't, again, ignore the lien, if you ignore the lien, then you may be losing the property. So tax liability must be assessed, and an effort must be made to collect the tax, that including sending notice of tax liability to the taxpayer. If these procedures have not been applied, it would be the just uh, justification for uh, lien withdrawals if these procedures uh, were not addressed without the process. Okay. So, however, if all legal procedures have been applied, but the tax will make if you make no payment within ten days, even though the IRS gives taxpayers much more than ten days. Some taxpayers even have years before the IRS even file a lien. Okay, and the taxpayers seek no remedy. If you seek no remedy, and the IRS has the option to file the federal tax lien, then once the tax lien is filed, it would send a notice of such action to, to you. Again, even after you were notified that the lien was filed, is about to be filed, you take no action. Once the lien is filed, so basically, they cannot levy the property until you are notified that a lien was filed. You must know that a lien is filed so you can take the, the proper step to address the lien before it goes into the levy process. As mentioned prior, tax, uh, 
uh, one other aspect of lien withdrawal is to faster the collection of tax. It's to encourage, it's to benefit the collection of tax, it's to encourage taxpayers uh, to reply to collection. So, uh, because once you receive a lien, you, you, it, it gives you the opportunity to address previous collection notices that you that were sent to you. Therefore, if, the can, if you can persuade the IRS that the withdrawals, uh, uh, the withdrawal of a federal tax lien can pave the way to borrow money or even refinance an asset to pay off the tax debt, they would be more likely to work with you. They would be more likely to work with you. If you can give evidence that, uh, let's say that you have a property, you have, you have your home, and you want to refinance it, you want to adjust your tax issues with the IRS, you want to uh, refinance your home, and I, the underwriter um, send you, uh, send you no notifications, um, conditions of approval. One of them is that the lien be withdrawn. So that can be used as a, con uh, 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 that can be used as an evidence to the IRS to persuade them to remove the lien. So that you can get financing to um, to to pay the tax debt. Um, lien withdrawal continue. Another aspect is that installment agreement through direct deposit, direct debit. My apologies. As a previous said, a payment plan agreement with the IRS won't automatically withdraw. It will not cease or get a way of way of a tax lien, okay? But under the IRS Fresh Start program, the IRS may withdraw a tax lien if, tax, if you agree to a monthly payment. You give them authorization to go to your bank account every month upon an agreement, installment agreement, let's say $250 every month or $500 every month or whatever, $1,200, $1,250 every month. And then as long as you adhere to that agreement, and part of that agreement must be to withdraw the lien. Okay? To withdraw the lien. They can release the lien. And that uh, um, if you sign up an agreement with them, um, direct debit installment agreement. This agreement required you to agree for them to take the money automatically every month from your bank account. Installment agreement through direct debit. One of the most crucial factors of lien withdrawal, the title must be current. The central we must be current on the basis of filing requirement for the last three consecutive tax years, as well as being current with all estimated tax payments in order for an installment agreement, uh, in order for a lien to be withdrawn, withdrawn through an installment agreement. You must be current for the last three consecutive tax years, and you must be current with all estimated tax payments. Tax lien conclusion. Conclusively, tax lien must be addressed as soon as you become aware of such action and it must be cured immediately to prevent you from going into the levy process. When you receive a tax, you must be taken care of properly. Taking the necessary step and properly adjust the tax, you can seize the IRS collection process. As a tax, you should apply due diligence by taking charge of your tax compliance by not ignoring your tax challenges. Don't just file, don't just um, uh, ignore filing your tax return because you're going to owe the IRS. One way or the other, you will have to pay that tax. And then at one point in time, it may be too much that you cannot pay it. And there, your properties, your valuable assets would be at risk. In light of filing uh, a lien, there is greater urgency to take immediate action to resolve any tax problem, 
not just tax lien, tax liability, uh, um, tax notices, uh, tax assessment, and so forth. Once a, because once a lien is filed, it becomes a legal tool at the advantage of the IRS to collect the tax debt. The IRS here have a claim against this property. You owe me money. You owe the federal, federal government money. And we put a lien on that property. And you cannot sell that. Whenever you sell that property, that lien will be paid. And the thing is, the tax debt is keep on accruing interest every month. So the lien is getting bigger, bigger, and bigger every month. So it is important for you to address it. Okay, we're going to cover the second part, which is uh, the levy part. But before we do that, let's just take a quick break. Yeah. Right, this bypass space. Again, this, uh, this, these are the services we provide at JDM Tax Consulting. We do individual tax preparation. Um, whether you have on file tax return, it doesn't matter whether it was one or 10 years of on file tax return, we can help you with them, uh, help bring you co in compliance with your tax filing requirement. And we do business tax return, um, we do nonprofit organizations, amended tax return, state income tax, sell and use tax return, tax review and consultations, and on file tax return. Uh, the service, some of the help we provide, penalty and interest abatement, a lien withdrawal, so release stop and um, reverse levy, audit representation, press start, um, debt settlement, tax debt settlement, tax payment plan, offer and compromise, and many more. So if you need help with a tax issue, call us at 904-204-7724. Visit us at JDM taxconsulting.com or email us at taxhelp at jbntaxconsulting.com. Federal tax lien. What you should know about IRS levies. Federal tax levy. Introduction. A levy is when the ownership. So we know that tax lien is a claim is the IRS saying that I have a claim against your property. A claim has been filed against your property. A levy says, now I have ownership of the asset. It is legally transferred to the federal government or the entity that imposed the levy. Okay, so therefore, if the lien is not taken care of, you see the process is the collection is not taken care of, the, the, the tax assessment is not taken care of, it's jumped to a levy, to the lien process. And then if the lien is ignored, then a levy takes place. So the levy is a legal transfer of that property to the federal government. It takes effect if you disregard, if you disregard and ignore the IRS notice and request to resolve tax liabilities and other tax balances. It is an attempt by the IRS or even state agencies, state, uh, state uh, government or lo local city government to seize your asset in order to satisfy the federal government, in order to satisfy the tax debt you owe to the federal government. So now, before a levy, as I explained before, before a levy could be executed, the IRS has a due process in place to ensure it is done legally. Because if it is done illegally, no judge will sign off. Because the judge has to be to sign off on that uh, on that levy. 
So could the procedure include sending out notices such as balance due, reminder of balance due, urgency of what may take place if the taxpayer does not take the necessary step to address the obligation? When a taxpayer, uh, uh, when a taxpayer ignores the, the IRS tax notices, request an order at the police of a tax uh, issue, a tax would be filed to warn as a warning. You are warned that a tax lien has been filed against you, against your property. And it is a warning to a taxpayer of the consequence and not of not resolving the tax liability. The threat includes warnings such as we will take your property if you don't take the necessary step to pay your tax. Another warning you may see is that we have the legal paperwork ready to start taking your home and all the assets. So when you see this warning, you have no options, but unless you don't care, you don't want, you don't care about your property, unless your property means nothing to you. Because I know some properties uh, have a lot of meaning to taxpayers. Some of them, some, some like this, some of them are, uh, were owned by generation, passed on from generation to the next generation. They were passed on from fathers to sons and from sons to grandson, from grandson to great grandson and so forth. From daughters to granddaughters, from granddaughters to great granddaughters and so forth, from generation after generation. So you have, so it is important that you pay attention to these notices because at one point in time, if you don't take charge, you will lose those important assets that you've owned for a generation that means so much that has memory of the past. Okay? When, so when you fail to respond to these notices to ask requests, and even when a filing is ignored, the last step in the collection process is a levy. They will levy, which is, uh, which is a legal transfer of that property. The levy says that once a levy is filed, it says that you no longer are the owner of that property. You no longer own that property. It's now belong to the levying, levying um, uh, 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 um, agency or individuals. So when the hours, uh, when all hours attempt to collect have failed due to your to a tax refusal to pay in not responding to collection activities, final notice of intent to levy would be issued on a letter called CP90. This is no longer an attempt. This is no longer the IRS trying to collect. This is saying that, okay, I've done everything I've done. I have followed all my procedure if they have. Now, this taxpayer have ignored every attempt. Now, a final notice of intent to levy, even notice of lien sent the taxpayer uh, disregard those notices. Now, a final notice of intent to levy would be issued on CP90. The intent, again, is to give you another option to cure the, uh, the lien. And then, if you ignore the lien at this point, then they'll have no, they have no options but to finally levy the property. Intent to levy is not a final levy, but it is an intent, intention to levy the property. This is no longer an attempt. This is serious and no longer a threat. At this stage of the tax, uh, is that if you as, as a tax that does not take, uh, don't take immediate action, then the federal government will start seizing the property within 30 days from the date of this notice, 30 days from the CP90. So now the most valuable asset in the levy, the most valuable asset in levy process are bank accounts. They can levy your bank accounts. They can garnish your wage or your social security benefits retirement account, life insurance that have cash values, your automobile, real estate properties like your home, your rental properties, 
with substantial that properties, not just properties, if you don't have any equity on the property, they're not going to levy the property because what is ended for them? It has to have um, equity. So if you have to work so hard over the years or your parents left you a piece of asset or piece of real estate, why letting the federal government come and levy it and take it from you when it will all require that you file your taxes on time and pay your taxes when they do. If you have not filed for years, don't wait until they send you an assessment of tax because that amount may be too, might be too high for you uh, on you. So if you file all your taxes when they are due to file and you pay your taxes on time, you will not you will uh, protect yourself from 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 being uh, from being levy. Okay, it could also uh, could also be a substantial. So, if the property has substantial amount of equity on it, if you work so hard and uh, and and have been paying on that property for so long and now uh, build up equity uh, uh, on this property, uh, I mean it's. It's not smart, it's not intelligent to let them levy the property. How to stop RS levy? The first option to stop RS levy basically is not is to not even let them get to that stage. Okay? To the first option is to not even let them let them get there. If you file your tax or pay your balance, or do respond to IRS notices, requests, and take charge of your tax compliance, it will be difficult to file a lien against you, no less to say levying your property. Because once the IRS sees your property or asset, it could be very difficult or even impossible to recover such assets. Seizure of residential property details and the Internal Revenue Manual, IR, IRM, uh, 5.17.3.5.5, okay? So it is crucial if you receive a final intent to levy to take charge and act immediately to prevent such, such seizure. RS Publication 594 provides several remedies on how to stop the RS from levying your property and assets. Another options, another option to stop the IRS from leaving your property is to pay the tax you owe them, or you can enter into an installment plan. If you pay the tax liability in full, or you and the IRS agreed on an installment plan, it will prevent the IRS from leaving your your asset. However, to be on the safe side from being levied, any term of agreement must include the discontinuation of the levy. It must have disclosure on that agreement stating that the levy will be removed, will be discontinued. Otherwise, there are certain agreements that will keep a state where the levy will stay there until the agreement fully satisfied. Any agreement you want, you want to make sure that the levy is removed. Okay. Offer and compromise is another um, options where a levy can be uh, removed. So, if you can show the IRS that you are serious about resolving the tax debt and submit a reasonable offer and compromise, they will suspend all collection activities once the offer is accepted. They will suspend. Again, the offer must include most requests that um, the levy or the lien be, uh, be removed. So collections uh, activity will be suspended. It does include levy while the offer is being considered. However, the taxpayer, as a taxpayer, you have to be serious about the offer. In other words, be faithful to it. Don't just have the offer and then you make one payment and then the next payment you fill. Or you don't have money in the account to satisfy the payment. 
Understand that the IRS purpose is not to levy and take possession of your assets. The main objective is to collect as much tax debt as possible. Even though doing so through levy is expensive, they'll do it if that is what it takes to collect the government money. Okay? So after they've done all they could and you ignore them, even though it may be expensive, they will go through with the levy. Um, they, will, they, uh, they will go through with the levy in the process with the goal to, of taking over your property for, to satisfy the tax debt. So if you can prove to the highest lease and the levy will enable you to voluntarily pay the tax, tax debt just as the lien release, or the lien withdrawal, they will release the levy to enable you to pay them. Because their goal for you is for you to pay them. That's all they want. It's not that they want your property. It's not what, that they want your, your home. It's not that they want your car. They don't really want to levy or garnish your paycheck. They just want to get paid. So if you can show them, if you can prove them that releasing the levy or the lien, withdrawing the levy or the lien will enable you to voluntarily pay the debt, then they will do it because that's the main purpose why they're levying you is to, uh, is to satisfy the debt. So therefore, Internal Revenue uh, Manual Section uh, uh, 5, uh, Internal Revenue Manual IRM 5.11.2.3.1.3 provide more detail about situation which will allow the IRS to release levy to enable taxpayers to pay that, that tax obligation. It seems to be complex, but information is there. So if you go to the IRS.gov and then probably look for the uh, internal revenue manual or just type IRM that code 5.11.2.3.1.3, uh, you will find that detail there. In the case where a levy would result in economic hardship, seizing the property would make it direct, will make it direly impossible for a taxpayer to meet basic living standards. The IRS may fully or partially release a levy. If it is evidential, if it is substantial evidence that a levy would result in economic hardship, it will make it hard for you to meet your basic necessity of life, your basic meet your basic need for your family. The IRS may fully or partially release a levy. So that to to show that to show that that uh, the levy uh, would result in economic hardship, you would have to submit form for 33F which is a title collection information statement or CIS to show information related to hardship. For internal revenue, IRM 5.11.2.3.1.4, you have to, uh, the task list, unit financial uh, hardship challenge will be assessed for each request of levy relief. Okay, so each levy that you are requesting to release, you will have to submit that form. Now let's cover uh, some assets that are exempt from levy. That's important. Minimum weekly exempt income would be found and there are some minimum uh, monthly exempt income that would, uh, that are ex exempt from levy. They would be found at this, um, website um, www.https uh, forward colon slash colon slash www.irs.gov forward slash pub pub sorry forward slash irs dash pdf dash p1494 dash pdf unemployment income unemployment income is exempt from levy so they cannot levy you, they cannot garnish your, 
your 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 unemployment income, workers' compensation, certain annuity and pension benefits, certain disability payments, certain public assistance, court ordered child support income, check IRC section sixty three thirty four for full list of assets that are exempt from levy on the title twenty six of the Internal Revenue Code found at https colon forward slash forward slash um, www.govregs.com forward slash us code forward slash 26 forward slash 6334 and then this is a table for figuring the amount that is exempt from levy and income so as you can see there, okay? Okay, for example, like a single taxpayer who is paid weekly and claim three dependents has 486,053 cents per week exempt from levy and so forth. And you can find the more detail of the link that I provided. That I provided. Can a taxpayer recover levy? Can a taxpayer recover levy assets? The very short answer is depend on the situation. A taxpayer may recover certain asset after levy. They may, and sometimes they may not. They, sometimes they may, sometimes they may not. Let's put it like that. For example, wages, funds taken from bank account are liquid assets, period. Liquid assets are directly applied, instantly applied against the tax debt. It will not be returned. Okay? It's already lowered. For say, if you had a tax liability of $45,000 and, uh, uh, and then you were levied, your bank account was levied $5,000, that's Five thousand dollars is gone. Now you only owe four thousand. I mean forty thousand. Okay, so they are applied directly to satisfy the tax debt. And once a liquid asset is applied against the taxpayer tax debt, it will not be returned. Period. This is now government property. I, however, if the asset was levied erroneously, it may be returned. If per se that the levy was illegal or the tax lien was illegal or they find out that the tax assessment was not correct, the IRS was wrong, if it, can, it, is, if it is proven that an error was made and the levy was erroneous, then liquid asset can be returned, can be refunded and sometimes it could be even with interest. It could be sometimes with interest. Sometimes the IRS is very generous. If they find out that they owe, they're the one who owed the taxpayer, they'll be willing to pay interest on what they owe you. Okay? So vehicle may, be, may possibly be returned if it has not already been sold. If your car was, was possessed, was levied, and it and then you and then it found out that it was levied erroneously it can be returned if it can be returned okay or if the levy was uh was an error or you decided okay you you come up with the money you want to go ahead and pay off the debt and the car has not been sold it will be returned to you if the if the asset has been sold the levy was an error the proper procedure was not addressed. The government will return the, uh, the cash value of the asset. So if, an, if the a taxpayer's asset was levied illegally or prematurely, or because prematurely means that you were not properly, um, properly, properly uh, um, notified, okay? You cannot be levied without proper, without assessment. You have to be assessed a debt. You have to receive collection notice 
and so forth collection uh, activity must be uh, must be made uh, before uh, before you are levied. There must be a lien file. So all of this procedure must be must take place. Other factors that may warrant the return of a levy property or issuing a cash value of such property would be returning the asset will pave way for collections and paying the taxes, just like in the lien process. And returning the property is at the best interest of the IRS. You see, again, this is proof to you that the main purpose is to collect the debt. Even during the even even after the property is levied, transferred to the government, if the property has not been sold to a third party, it could be returned to you if you can uh, uh, timely uh, resolve the issue before the property is sold, while the government still in ownership of the transferred property, of the levied property. A time frame, uh, uh, a limited time frame. A time frame has about nine months to claim a property or an applicable cash value of the property after being levied. A real estate property may be returned to a taxpayer before it is sold. If it is sold, the taxpayer has 100, you have 180 days to repurchase the property. For the purchase price, in addition to an annual rate of 20%. If the, for example, if your property or home was levied, okay, and it is not sold yet, you can pay the tax debt, whatever you owe, whatever caused the levy. You can cure the levy to get your property back. But if it is sold, you have 180 days to repurchase the property at a rate of 20% per year, annual rate. Okay? So first say that if you if you if your property were twenty uh, uh, purchase um, either purchase price or probably was twenty uh, one hundred thousand dollars and then uh, one year within a year would be one hundred twenty thousand that's plus twenty percent basically okay the IRS is required to release let's recap the IRS is required to release a seizure if it's determined that you paid the amount you owe. The period for collection ended prior to the seizure being issued. Releasing the seizure will help you pay your taxes. You entered into an installment agreement and the term of the agreement do not allow the seizure to continue, like we explained to you. An agreement must have the term of the agreement must not allow the seizure to continue, must discontinue the, the levy. The seizure creates an economic hardship, meaning the IRS has determined the seizure prevents you from meeting basic, basic reasonable living expenses, or the value of the property is more than the amount owed, and releasing the seizure will not hinder the ability to collect the amount owed. So if they release the property, it will not hinder them to collect uh, their ability to collect the tax you owe them, that they may release it. Now, please note that the release of a seizure of a levied property does not mean that you don't have to pay the balance due. It is in good faith the levied property is released. The levy is released to give you the opportunity to cure, to cure the situation that caused the levy in the first place. So you must still arrange with the IRS to resolve your tax debt or seizure may be reissued. A levy will be reissued which will cause them to retransfer the property back to the federal government. For more information, see publication 494 the IRS collection process, it's a PDF document. You can go to the IRS website and see that document. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, watching again. 
And uh, if you need any help with tax issues, please call us at 904-204-7724 or visit us at www.jdmtaxconsulting.com. Email us at taxhelp at jdmtaxconsulting.com. The end of our presentation. Thank you.